Hi everyone, with me Vanessa, welcome to Asa News. Landslide happened in Myanmar, killed at least 100 people. Authorities say landslide at a jade mine in northern Myanmar killed at least 100 people, with more fears dead, after a pile of mine waste collapsed into a lake, triggering a wave of mud and water that buried scores of workers. The miners were collecting stones in the jade rich Pukant area of Kachin state when the muddy wave crashed onto them following heavy rain, the fire service department said in a Facebook post. Deadly landslides and other accidents are common in the poorly regulated mines of Hapkant. Media have reported scores of people killed in the area in recent years, many of them freelance jade pickers who score tailing the residue from mining for stones that have been missed by larger operators. Singapore Prime Minister Lee Shing Lung calls election as virus lockdown lift. Prime Minister announces he was satisfied a ballot could be held safely, despite criticism that such a move might endanger voters during the coronavirus pandemic. The tiny city-state has one of the Asia's highest tallies of COVID-19, largely fueled by mass outbreaks in migrant workers' dormitories, east strict lockdown rules. An election now, when things are relatively stable, will clear the decks and give the new government a fresh, full, five-year mandate. It can then focus on this national agenda and the difficult decisions it will have to make and to carry. The alternative is to wait out the COVID-19 pandemic. But we have no assurance that the pandemic will be over before this government's term must end next April. We are still in the midst of COVID-19 so it will not be a normal election campaign. Before deciding to proceed, I had to be certain of two things. First, that voters can vote safely. And second, that political parties can campaign effectively. After studying the issues, I'm satisfied that both of these can be done. There will be safe distancing measures practiced at the polling stations. Voters will be allocated specific time slots to vote and seniors will be given priority to vote before others. Lee, whose party has comfortably won every election in Singapore since its independence in 1965, says the virus situation had a stability but challenges lay ahead and his government needed a fresh mandate. Singapore's Elections Department says it's committed to holding free and fair vote, providing alternatives for political parties to reach out to voters through additional television broadcasts and live streaming venues. Schools in Thailand reopen after coronavirus cases. The schools across Thailand reopen with coronavirus prevention measures in place. Nearly 5,000 students return to Samkok School, about 50 kilometers north of Bangkok, wearing face masks and receiving face shields and temperature checks from the school. Once students arrive at school, teachers hand face masks to them because it's mandatory to wear them. We are also providing face shields for students' project presentation or for eating. The students will get their temperatures checked and the facial recognition scanner will automatically send a message to the parents. He adds that students are to tell to stay in home for quarantine for 15 days before school restarted as an extra precaution. The school also turned old ballot boxes into classroom positions to enforce social distancing between the students. I feel safe but annoyed at the same time because the position blocks my view. At the same time, it makes me feel safer. I feel good studying behind the box because it makes me feel safer returning to school. Thailand has marked 37 days without a case of local transmission. The coronavirus has killed 58 people among more than 3,000 infections. Search and rescue believe trapped gen mine after landslide in Myanmar. Photographs from Myanmar Fire Service Department show searchers and rescue operations underway in northern Myanmar following a deadly landslide at a jade mine. The photos show rescue workers and local workers moving bamboo stretchers through muddy terrain. 
Authorities say the landslide killed at least 100 people with more feared dead after a pile of mine waste collapsed into a lake, triggering a wave of mud and water that buried scores of workers. The fire service department says in a Facebook post the miners were collecting stones in the J3 subcant area of Kachin state when the muddy wave crashed onto them following heavy rain. Vietnam Vos work together with ASEAN leader to overcome difficult time. ASEAN leaders will be discussing ways to reduce the impact of the coronavirus outbreak and economic recovery during the 36th ASEAN summit. Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc kicked off the meeting with an open ceremony in Hanoi. Leaders are attending via video teleconference due to various related travel restrictions. Dịch Covid-19 đã để lại những hệ lụy nặng nề với phát triển kinh tế và ổn định xã hội của các quốc gia thành viên ASEAN. Chúng ta đau lòng trước mất mát của hàng chục ngàn gia đình có người thân ra đi. The COVID-19 outbreak has had consequences in economic development and social stability for ASEAN member states. We feel the sorrow of thousands of families that have lost loved ones to the virus. We share losses and difficulties with businesses and millions of workers affected by the COVID-19 outbreak, especially those working in the service industry. However, we are determined not to back down. GDP bình quân của ASEAN được dự báo tăng trưởng ở mức thấp trong năm 2020, nhưng các nền kinh tế ASEAN vẫn giữ được ổn ổn định. Vietnam became a member of ASEAN in 1995. This is the third time Vietnam has chaired the ASEAN summit along with 1998 and 2010. Indonesia's reluctance become the habit of using plastic even though banned in market and mall. Shoppers and vendors in the Indonesian capital says a ban on single-use plastic in markets and malls that came into effect is impractical in some cases and suggested more time is needed to comply with the new rules. At traditional market, Reuters visit, people still appeared to be using plastic. I am confused and also my buyers are even more confused. What container do I want to use for my fish? I sell fish and there is nothing I can use except plastic bags. The new regulation stipulates and shopkeepers and stallholders should provide environmentally and friendly carrier bags in future and the penalties for violations will range from written warnings. Jakarta's governor signed the regulation in December. I think that is a good idea to reduce plastic bag usage, but it needs to be more intensely communicated to encourage people to bring their own bags. The forms of plastic banned in the regulation include latex, thermoplastics and polyethylene. According to the science journal reports from 2015, Indonesia is believed to be the second worst offenders when it comes to dumping plastic waste in the sea. Nearly 100 Rohingya refugees are rescued by fishermen. According to a local fisherman, the refugees will be given a temporary shelter while the local government decides whether they can stay in Indonesia or be given provisions and allowed to continue their journey by sea. This vessel carrying the refugees are fine adrift with more than 90 foreigners nationals on board, including 15 men, 49 women and 30 children, after their crowd boat broke down off the coast of Indonesia's Aceh province. This request from the fishermen is nothing more than a sense of humanity and part of our tradition as a North Aceh fisherman community is the hope that the refugees will be looked after in our village. If the government is incapable, us, the community, will bring help to them because you are human beings and they, the Rohingya refugees, are human too and we have a heart. Many Rohingya have made perilous voyages to Malaysia, Thailand and Indonesia over the past few years, fleeing Myanmar or refugee camps in Bangladesh. A landslide at the jade mine in northern Myanmar killed at least 113 people. Authorities say after a pile of mine waste collapsed into a lake, triggering a wave of mud and water that buried many workers and killed at least 113 people. The fire service department says in a Facebook post the miners were collecting stones in the Jade Ridge Upkant area of Kachin State when the muddy wave crashed onto them following heavy rain. The department said rescue workers recovered 113 bodies but more were missing. Video obtained by Reuters shows body bags lined up as people wait to identify the dead. Deadly landslides and other accidents are common in the poorly regulated mines of Upkant. 
According to the local media reports, scores of people have been killed in the area recent years, with many of them freelance jade pickers who score tailings, the residue from mining for stones that have been missed by larger operators. Thailand camping turns fishing nets into coronavirus fighting gear. Anan Jaitung, along with other Thai fishermen, used to pile tethered nylon fishing nets on the beach. Fishermen hope to sell these nets, but mostly the nets are carried by waves out to the sea. For the first time, Anan has an alternative that's both lucrative and environmentally friendly. Thailand fishermen from four coastal villages in eastern and southern Thailand joined the project, each earning 10 baht or equal to 32 cents dollar per kilogram. One kilogram amounts to be about one or two nets. If no one bought my fishing nets, they will not just pile up like a mountain. It was like that before, and I had to run around to find a buyer. The Environmental Justice Foundation provides an economic incentives for Thailand fishermen to help stem the flow of fishing nets into the oceans, where more than 600,000 tons are estimated to end up globally. Thailand with 50,000 small fishing vessels and 10,000 commercial vessels is one of the world's largest fishing industries. The project has collected more than 1.3 tons of used nets since it piloted two months ago, and the Environmental Justice Foundation plans to expand it to all seaside provinces by year end. So usually if there is no proper collection, nets are often neglected, either that they are sold to junkyards, left on the shores, or some are burned just to get rid of them. This is like a very dangerous action because these nets, if they are left on beaches, they could fall into the ocean and they could just drip for decades entangling animals like dolphins, sea turtles, dugongs, or even coral reefs. Usually local communities are actually very environmentally conscious already, but they just need helping hands from other sectors so that they could join forces and help, um, make, the sol help make the solution and the situation better. Because, you know, in order to solve like this type of problem, you actually need help from everyone and participation from everyone. During the pandemic, Kuali has shredded 700 kilograms of nets to make face shields alcohol spray bottles and push sticks for elevator buttons and ATM machines to avoid contact. To Sapol Supamete Kulwat, marketing director says, we've sold over 100,000 of them. During the first week of sales, we've sold over 1,000 of them, the push sticks, while the face shield came out later on. They both become new normal products that people will use in their daily lives. He declines to give five financial details, but confirmed that the net recycling was providing profitable, with sales in Europe, Japan, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan and Hong Kong. He says we're here to fill in the gap, to transform the waste into practical products. That After being closed for three months, Indonesian zoo reopens with social distancing measures. A zoo in Indonesia reopened after being closed for three months to prevent the spread of COVID-19 despite having the highest number of deaths from the virus in East Asia outside of China. The government-run Ragunan Zoo in South Jakarta welcomed hundreds of visitors. Temperature-taking social distancing and hand-washing measures are enforced by staff and security. Only a thousand visitors are allowed in a day and tickets have to be booked online. Dalam uh, pembukaan hari pertama ini, pengunjung sudah terdeteksi dan sudah masuk kurang lebih sekitar 160 orang jam 9 tadi pagi. Nah. On the first day of opening, we counted as many as 140 visitors up to 9 a.m. We did online ticketing for limited visitors, which accommodates 1,000 people a day. We are required to wear masks. Also, we are not allowing pregnant women, children between 0 to 9 year old in age, and elderly people 60 years and above. Lain. Uh, seperti misalnya ibu-ibu hamil, anak usia 0-9 tahun, dan lansia 60 tahun ke atas juga tidak diizinkan masuk ke dalam. Visitors says they felt safer at the zoo than the mall as the enclosures are outdoors and that they wanted to contribute to the upkeep of the animals. Satu, rindu ya. <laughs> Kedua, Firstly, I miss this a lot. Secondly, looking at this COVID-19 pandemic situation, there aren't many visitors and there will be not be enough to feed them if there is no income generated by visitors. So I would encourage that we contribute by visiting, even though it won't amount too much.
The health ministry says Indonesia have more than 1,000 new infections, bringing the total number to more than 45,000 and 56 more deaths, bringing to the total more than 2,000. Indonesia is the highest coronavirus death toll in East Asia outside of China. Thank you for today. We'll see you again.